Hey Truett, this looks like a metal roof from the street, but there's something different. What is this roof? Yes, sir. This looks like a metal roof, but it's actually the Tesla solar roof. Oh baby, today's build show, Tesla solar roof. Let's get going. All right, guys, let me introduce you to Truett Jenkins. Truett's a second generation builder. We're with Jenkins Design Build here on a project outside of Austin, Texas. Is this your first time using this, Truett? Yes, sir, it is. Uh, so give me the walkthrough on the system. These are the panels. These are the roofing that we're seeing actually on this roof right here. Yes, sir. So here you're looking at two different tiles. So we actually have a performing tile, so it's actually taking advantage of the UV rays and converting it into energy. Okay. And that you can see- Oh, you got a fool. That's actually the non-performing yeah, dial. <laughs> Let's leave that in, I like it. It's, it is hard to tell, guys. This is the performing tile, and what Truett just had is the non-performing tile. And the only reason he could tell was we flipped it over and realized, oh, this doesn't have the connection. That's funny. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you know how these are made? It, uh, from what I remember reading about it, this front face is some type of special glass. Yes, sir. Uh, and then probably there's a laminate because there it looks it appears to be a metal substrate underneath yes, that. Sir. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, it's similar to the windshield on your car. So if you have laminate. impact on the front side, uh, it can the structure can still stay intact from the back side because it has that metal backing. Okay, that makes sense. So in theory, you have a big enough uh, hailstorm, you might be able to crack these but you're not gonna break through. It's not gonna be like shattering a uh, tempered glass door, let's say, where all that glass falls to the ground and you could walk right in the house. Correct, although my uh, roofer has actually also told me that they've had softball size hail hit these tiles and have had no problems. Dang, that's pretty impressive. Yes, sir. Now, on this house in particular, were you worried about when you were designing it, which roofs are facing which direction, right? Because we don't have a rack to kind of move and integrate we're dealing strictly with pitch. Did you design this roof initially or design the house, I should say, you guys are design build with the solar roof in mind? No, sir. We actually were planning to just do a metal standing seam uh, roof. Okay. And then the client wanted to change to the Tesla roof. Hmm. And so uh, on Tesla's end, they engineer it uh, where they determine exactly how many performing tiles they need uh, based on like the last 12 month uh, weather patterns uh, and there's various other calculations involved with oh, that. That's pretty wild. And how much solar is actually this roof going to produce? You know how big the array is? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is about a 50 kW. Holy roof. cow! Oh, that's a lot of yes, solar. Sir. Now this is not a small house either here, but 50 kW. That's a lot of these panels, I suspect. And I was talking to your roofer before we started uh, k based roofing, and it looks like this is pretty straightforward. When these panels go in. These actually connect to the adjoining panels. Yep. And then ultimately you're gonna run uh, this DC power, the panels are producing DC, through some conduit into your garage where the inverters are gonna live. Correct, right? yes sir. And it'll take that DC power, invert it to AC, and then the, a the batteries will actually receive AC power and send that to the house. Okay, that's pretty cool. Talk to me about install. How different is this and where do you start on install with this roof compared to, uh, you know, let's say a metal roof? You know, it's really not too difficult to install. That's one of the benefits of it. Obviously, you start with your underlayment, which uh, Tesla has its own underlayment that they specify that just sticks on. Yep. Uh, and in our, our case, the underlayment, they just applied it right on top of the previous underlayment that we had for the metal roof. Now, the underlayment that I saw that you showed me, man, it feels pretty bomber. I don't know the exact specs, but it looks to be like a really thick 40 or maybe more mil thick uh, probably high temperature asphaltic based, uh, you know, ice and water shield like yes, we would use all over the place. Yes, and then what's interesting about this system, uh, Truett, is that it kind of naturally has an air gap underneath the panels by this clip system. Yes, Can sir. you talk to me about that at all? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. We have, uh, we do have an air gap underneath these panels. So if you do have, uh, you have rain or anything coming through, it's gonna have plenty of airflow to dry that out. And in effect, it's a rain screen roof system, right? Just Correct. like you and I are installing claddings on walls with an air gap behind it. This roof is the same way. Pretty ingenious though. 
This panel is how they connect up. Let's see if I can do it on camera here. But there's a, uh, there's a hook that catches, it snaps in, and I'm hearing that this could even potentially get pulled later. Is that true? Is That's that what correct. you've heard as well? Yep. Yeah, it's pretty easy. You just snap these off, snap these off, and then pull the tile out pretty much. How about that? You know, your roofer mentioned that he might actually give me a demo of that. Let's go check that out. A little bit of a uh, tough uh, climb to get up on that roof, so we're gonna let the drone film this. But the roofer Capos tells me that these panels, because they clip together, you could actually, if you had a problem in the future, if you needed to service something or do something, you can actually unclip a middle panel. How crazy is that? I mean, it's not easy if you've got a double lock standing seam metal roof to try and get one of those panels off. It's not easy to pull a shingle or a tile, but this supposedly can be unclipped to do service. So we're gonna watch from the drone and see them do that. Man, that's pretty sweet, True, that you can actually pull a panel in the center. I also really liked, uh, the roofer was telling me that you actually have two roof jacks. So like where you had a plumbing vent on the other side here, you've got a plumbing um, penetration flashing, but you also have another one underneath at the deck level. And with that inch and a half air gap, I suspect this actually would be a pretty energy efficient roof because you've got that space for any heat buildup on this black roof to kind of dissipate out, right? Correct, yes sir. Yep, we, uh, we spray our ceilings uh, with foam. Mm -hmm. So having that extra air gap above the tiles gives plenty of room for ventilation and keeps the, the uh, inside of the garage nice and cool. I love it. So conditioned attic in this house. Also, random side note here, notice you're doing uh, zip 2.0 on your house. Nice job, looks like some really good details there. But back to the tiles, uh, I'm curious, can you give us any idea of cost on these turret? Uh, you know, you've been building for years and I've, I've been friends with you guys for, for more than a decade. I've seen you guys put clay tile on, I've seen you put metal on. You're not typically doing asphalt shingles on your house, but give me some idea of range of cost for this. Yes, sir, yeah. Obviously it's gonna depend on the circumstance, the size, how many performing tiles versus non-performing tiles. Yeah. Uh, but in general, at least in this application, it was about three to four times the cost for the Tesla compared to the metal. Okay. However, uh, once you factor in the 30% federal tax credit, yeah. uh, you're going to see that number reduce. And you also have to factor in uh, the fact that you're receiving less electricity costs because of the solar. That's pretty awesome. And this is a multi-decade roof, right? Impact resistant. This glass is not breaking down in the sun. This is a really impressive roof. I also thought, also thought it was interesting that the um, some of the details, for instance, a little hard to see here from the ground, but the edge panels, those are 24 gauge Kynar painted metal. The valleys where you can see them, those are uh, 24 gauge metal as well. So you've got a really bomber roof system that's gonna last, I would suspect, at least 50 plus years. This is not gonna get changed out uh, when a Texas hailstorm comes through. This system is very durable because it, it has a class three hail rating, uh, which is if you stop, if you drop an inch and three quarter steel ball 20 feet above, uh, it should not shatter. Wow. So there's your hail rating and then it also has a class A fire rating, which is the best fire rating. How about that? You know, true, I actually have a pretty similar product to a inch and three quarter steel ball. You don't happen to have any of these laying around at the dumpster that I could uh, do a little uh, rogue hail testing to you. Yes, sir. Whatever you want. Let's check it out. Golf ball hail simulation test. <laughs> Build show style. We got a solar roof panel. Let's check it out. How about that? On the edge and it still did fine. That's impressive. This golf ball, I just whipped at this panel. I think I hit right in here somewhere. I don't see any cracking. I don't see anything. That looks really good. I suspect you could crack it uh, with a big enough ball or a, a hard enough throw. But don't forget, when your roof's at an angle and that, that hail's coming down, it's gonna bounce off. It's not quite the same as a direct hit in this kind of scenario. Uh, but still, even on a job site test, looks like it did pretty well. Okay, now that we got the impact test done, let's talk to the roofer here. I got Matthew with K-Post. Matthew, nice I to think see we, did, again. we did pretty well on that uh, test, brother. Absolutely. Not bad at all. Now, yeah. could I have broken it in theory? 
Yes. It's not I mean, unbreakable, right? The, to be honest with you, I turned my back and I did not look at the test, <laughs> but we've done a lot of these tests in the office, uh, including hitting it with a hammer because right now we're on a golf course. Yeah. And one thing that we've seen on multi-million dollar homes is that they have concrete tile or clay tile roofs. And if they're anywhere close to me with my notorious shank, we found that they're generally replacing 10 or 15 tiles every year. Is that right? And then the existing tiles fade over time and mm -hmm. then it sort of looks like a patchwork. And nobody with this type of property would ever want something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. So with the pitch and with the tempered glass, this is really a great product to stand up against those hailstorms that we get here. How about that? And then um, you're going to be saving money from replacing your roof, doing any type of inconvenience. And these things are very, very strong. That's pretty crazy. You know, when I came here, I was thinking this story is solar and getting the look of not having solar, but having solar. But I think ultimately the story I really like is that this is a system that's incredibly durable, really well thought out. Uh, now you, you've installed more than one of these, right? This is not your first day on, uh, on the Tesla solar job, right? It's a truly revolutionary product is what are, we're dealing with. Are you seeing this get adopted more and more? Absolutely. We're still kind of in the early uh, cusp of this, right? In, uh, in Texas, we've been very reluctant to get into solar, unlike uh, California. But now that the cost of PV has sort of gotten to a, a good point and we have the 30% tax credit being extended, yeah. um, we're really seeing people look at solar reducing those energy costs and then also here in austin i know that we had a large power outage yeah. at the beginning of this year and the last thing anybody wants is for their family to not have heat in the winter yeah. for three or four days so people are coupling the tesla solar roof with the battery backup with the power walls so that during the day they can they can uh, power their home and charge their batteries and then in the evening they can discharge the batteries where if the grid goes out i'm already seeing warnings coming up for for summer high heat because we're having so many people move to texas that people are really looking to have that electricity inter independence yeah. and not being so reluctant on the uh, relying on the grid that's pretty cool so this house 50 kw solar on your solar roof how much battery storage do we have going on here? uh 10 batteries 10 power walls that's 10 power walls. power walls yes so that is enough to charge um, all the appliances. And this is, uh, generally you're gonna want it to, uh, this is a 12 to 15 hour type backup situation okay. where when the sun goes too, down right? and then the sun comes back up, yeah. um, it's because they're gonna constantly be recharged. So you're yeah. not, you're not, you don't have a battery that's supposed to last for two weeks. It's supposed to be recharged every day. Yeah, that makes sense. And talk to me about how much this particular house is going to rely on solar versus grid power. Uh, we can, we did uh, over a hundred percent to take a, to completely reduce their electricity bill. Okay. Um, and people are going that way because uh, we also we plan for today, but we also plan for tomorrow. Sure. So as new technology comes out, five to ten years with a roof that has a warranty for twenty five, that's expected to last, last a lot longer. Yep. People are going to be adding more technology, and we make sure that we incorporate that into our estimates whenever we're, we're they're building the home. So in theory, someday maybe we could unplug from the grid with this kind of system, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we have um, when we install this the Tesla solar roof with the power walls, it's not hooked up to the grid yet. And we have customers that are already using it that are thrilled. And it's for the first two weeks, all they do is they stare at their phone. <laughs> and if a cloud flies over, they show their, their production drops a little bit, but then it goes back up and we get text messages about how it works during the rain and on cloudy wow. days. Um, it's really something that is, it's, it's a, a perfect product that more and more people are adopting because they're looking 25, you know, 30 years down the road and really having that electricity and independence. Very cool. Matthew, thanks for coming out to see me on the job site. It's always a pleasure. By Thank let's you. Let's go sir. back to see uh, the builder here and finish this video up. All right, let's talk about controls. How will your clients kind of know what's happening with the solar and, you know, this whole system? Yes, sir. So there's actually two methods of control for the client. So uh, there, first, there's the span panels, which are smart electrical ah, panels. Ah, you're doing span panels. Here. Yes, sir. Cool. And so we're going to replace the uh, two main 200 amp electrical panels with span panels. Okay. And the client will have control through the span app, and they will actually be able to see, okay, uh, what what all are my loads at this moment, and then they can actually turn off and on. Uh, 
breakers from the app. How about that? That's one form of control. And another form of control is through the Tesla app itself. And that allows uh, more customization with the actual, how the roof actually functions. So you can choose things like, when do you want to pull from the batteries? Do you want to pull from the batteries during peak hours so that you use less grid power when it's most expensive? Ah, uh, that's a common thing that people would do. Uh, so there's various ways to customize through yeah, so the app. Five o'clock in July, that's when power is most expensive. Everybody's got their AC on at home exactly. work. Uh, so that'd be a great time to pull from the batteries instead. Yes, sir. And I guess you could, in theory, you may not have that here, but there are places where you can get time-based metering too. Uh, so you can pay less money with this system. Uh, Correct. What about the power goes out in the neighborhood though for two weeks? Uh, and by the way, it's cloudy or snowy out. Is there any other form of backup for this house? Yes, sir, there is actually. On this house, we have two backup generators uh, because the way the Tesla system works now is you have to have a generator for each gateway. Okay. And the gateway basically transfers power a certain direction depending on what's needed. Gotcha. Uh, so you can pull from the grid, you can pull from solar, uh, or you can pull from the batteries via the gateway. So you have to have a generator for each gateway, which is why we have two uh, generators backing up each one. That's some serious resilience right there. Holy cow, that is impressive. We need to come back here. What do you think about having us back when uh, when you get all this installed? Yes, sir. When that power walls get in, the spans get in. It'd be really fun to see. It'd be our pleasure. Comment below if you want us to come back to this house and see what the Jenkins team did at the end. I think this is going to be a really cool house. Thank you so much for the tour. Very impressive. By the way, if you guys want to uh, learn more about Jenkins Custom Homes, believe it or not, their website is newhousebuilder.com. They grabbed that in the 90s. That is so awesome. I love that that's your website address. And if you want to learn more about Tesla uh, and the roofer that was here on site with us today, I'll put a link to both of those in the description below. Very, very impressive. My first time seeing it on site. And to be honest, I thought the story really was about solar, but there's a, so much more interesting stuff going on here. And the last thing I want to say is, you know, this is a big house. This is a client who has the money to do whatever they want. But I think what you're going to see here is just like Cadillac came out with airbags uh, in their cars in, I don't know, the 80s probably. And now even the least expensive Kia on the road has airbags. I suspect we're going to see the same thing happening with Tesla solar roof, with batteries, with the resilient story that Jenkins Customs Homes is, uh, is kind of leading the pack on here. So that maybe, uh, you know, your kids, when they get involved in the business in 20 years, this is kind of a standard feature, even on modestly priced houses. Yes, Thanks sir. for leading the way, brother. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Our pleasure. Thank I'll you. I'll put a link to these guys in the description below. Hey, guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content here in the Build Show every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Instagram or TikTok. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.